One of the best things about doing the show is getting to talk to all sorts of fascinating people. It's way more fun than yelling interview questions out my window at strangers. But lately I've found myself craving a, a deeper connection that you get from most celebrity interviews. Less, tell me about your latest project, and more, tell me how your adult self would be a disappointment to you as a child. By the way, don't get me started. Which is why we here at The Late Show have been carefully crafting a set of questions specifically designed to dig deep and reveal my guest's truest self. It's called the Colbert Questionnaire. We made a graphic and everything. And in only 15 questions, it covers the full spectrum of the human experience, everything from spirituality and the nature of fear to important stuff like sandwiches. So I want to kick it off by administering this scientifically invalid test to a few scientifically proven celebrities. I mean, nobody that big, your Hankses, your Streeps, your Clooney's. First up, Tom Hanks. Before we go to the questionnaire, I asked Tom to discuss how he really feels about celebrity interviews. Tom, thanks so much for being here yet again. I'm surprised your hair hasn't grown out. Now, well, every, every day it gets a little better. Now, Tom, I'm going to take a, a little sidestep right here. I don't know if you, are you a Dick Cavett fan? Did you watch oh, Dick? Look, I grew up, I grew up watching Dick so, Cavett. You, you bet. I just, I like to watch Dick every so often. I've got to know him over the years. And I think he's a great model for interviewing. And I just watched an interview he did with Lee Marvin years ago. And I, I want to ask you a question that he asked Lee Marvin that I just saw. How do you feel about interviews? Because you're... Well, you're the best at them, Tom. Like, everybody, it's proverbial in, in late night that everybody just wants to see the word Hanks up on their board. Like, okay, I don't have to do anything tonight. Tom Hanks is going to be here. But it's not what you do for a living. Everything's up there on the screen. I mean, that's how you've trained yourself for your life. Does it ever bother you that you have to come talk about the thing that you spent all that time making? Just go see the movie. Why do I have to tell anybody? Yeah, well, look, I, I wish Lee, I wish I had the intimidation factor that I'm sure Lee Marvin had. Yeah. Don't you think that Dick Cavett was a little bit of afraid that that Lee Marvin was just going to, you know, loosen his tie and and kick his butt right there on TV? I he think was he was smoking camel. I think he was smoking camel straights the whole time too. It looked like an <laughs> unbelievable. Did he did he sit in the chair like this with a cigarette on it? You know, I saw him. I saw him on uh, uh, the Johnny Carson show many many years ago, and Johnny Carson said not to not to mix up our. Okay, so I'm on. I'm on Stephen Colbert. We're talking about Dick Cavett, and I'm pulling up a Johnny Carson story. Who Cavett wrote that, for? But go ahead. But he did for a while, and also Jerry Lewis, the Jerry Lewis talk show, briefly that sure. was from the Hollywood Palace. Anyway, um, uh, 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 Lee Marvin said uh, Dick Cavett said uh, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. No, Johnny Carson. Said to to Lee Marvin, well, "You're you're a war hero. You got uh, you got a medal. You got a medal in World War II." And he said, "Johnny, I, Johnny, I can't do it. I can't get down. Johnny, I was not a war hero. I got I got shot in the ass. And as as I was sitting there bleeding, and I looked down on the beach and I saw a war hero. I saw a war hero. I saw a, a beach master that was guiding in landing craft with red flags under enemy fire on the beach at Iwo Jima. That man was a war hero. And that man." was Sergeant Bob Keisham. You know who Bob Keisham is? Captain Kangaroo? Captain Kangaroo. The guy who we wow. grew up with as Captain Kangaroo was a sergeant in the Marine Corps who guided in landing craft during the invasion of Iwo Jima. Holy now, cow. That would actually, if I was going to be on the Dick Cavett show with him, you know, like, you know, like if we were all on the same, sure. same thing. Sure. The question about Iwo Jima would be the third thing I would ask him, because I'd actually like to know first who was the voice of Mr. Moose and really could Grandfather Clock actually talk like that? that mm -hmm. Those would be the questions. I'd, the question I'd get I would to, ask is when the train came around past the silo uh, full of Rice Krispies, why didn't it fill it up every time? Because that's what I was waiting for every morning before I went to school. You know, we needed to we needed to have mystery in our lives, my friend. Otherwise, we would have grown up thinking that there was a simple answer to all of life's problems. You're always fascinating to talk to. I'd love to ask you a million questions, but I can't. So I've distilled everything possibly worth knowing about a person down to 15 simple questions. Tom Hanks, are you ready for the Colbert questionnaire? Hit it. Tom Hanks, what is the best sandwich? 
ham, ham, ham on Swiss. No, no tomato. Lettuce and mustard. What's one thing that you own that you really should throw out? Uh, uh, one of those typewriters? Because you got two. I happen to know you have two right now. Hell no! Hell no! You never throw away a typewriter. I have too, I have too much stationery. I can throw out a couple of old notebooks. What's the scariest animal, Tom? Uh, that would be uh, a, a type of worm that lives in the sand of beaches of Australia. I'll send you a picture. It'll haunt your dreams. What, what happens? Well, they, they're these things, and they come up, and they have these heads that if you look at them close, they honestly look like something that, that the Mandalorian has to, have to flee from on a, uh, out of, a, out of the, on Tatooine. Apples or oranges? I'm going to go with oranges. You know you can't put peanut butter on an orange, right? You can put peanut butter on a slice of apple. Uh, that's, that's not why I eat fruit. I don't view fruit as a peanut butter delivery system. <laughs> Have you ever asked someone for their autograph? Uh, y yes. Would you mind sharing who that is? Uh, it was, uh, uh, I, I thought when the very first time I ever went to a baseball game when I was seven years old, I thought it would be very easy just to go down to the to the Giants Giants clubhouse of Candlestick Park, explained to everybody around me that I wanted Willie Mays' autograph, and if I just crawled out to the edge and stuck my head over the side and waved a piece of paper and a pen, that Willie Mays would be oh well of course kid during the game. I thought that because I'd seen too many TV shows where uh, and uh, we weren't even allowed even up close, so I didn't get the I didn't get the autograph, but I wanted it. What do you think happens when we die? I think we get to race automobiles. I think we get to put on crash helmets and beat A.J. Foyt. Favorite action movie? Uh, the Dirty Dozen. That's what Lee Marvin was talking to Cavett about. The Dirty Dozen. That's, I'm not you. That's literally what Marvin was talking to Cavett about in the interview. And because no. and Cavett said, do you, you were in war. Do you, no, how no, do you feel about the depiction of war in movies? Some people say the Dirty Dozen. So that gives you a, a snapshot into the 60s. Some people thought that that glorified war in a way that really shouldn't be you know, sort of advertised on the screen. And he said, yeah. no, nah, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> so he goes, uh, he goes uh, film is really about uh, putting the team together and the training that we yeah. did. Uh, parachuting yeah. into the... Uh, into the yeah, castle yeah. or the palace or whatever it was. And all yeah. of that was just, uh, that was the second half that we paid off so the audience could ex enjoy the first half because they knew that was coming. Okay. It's always goes, good to kill Nazis, Dick. <laughs> Nothing wrong with killing Nazi generals. I always find exactly. that a good source, of, good source of family entertainment. Exactly. I saw, the, I, I saw the Dirty Dozen on a black and white TV in pan and scan with commercials on it. And you could not have convinced me that it was not the greatest motion picture ever made. Pretty good movie. Pretty good movie. But he goes, good movie. yeah, it's, uh, you know, nobody wants to see the real thing. <laughs> That's what he said. How about that? He goes, How about that? He goes, nobody wants to go to a newsreel. Okay, so <laughs> Lee, a favorite smell. Favorite smell. Vanilla. Exercise. Worth it? Yes. Flat. <laughs> you tell. You tell me. Come on, man. Let me let me tighten my sweater. Check out check out this trunk. Come on, look at that trunk. Wow. Yeah, thank you for a man of your core, height, baby. It's it's the core. Flat or sparkling? Uh, sparkling. Let's have a party. Most use app on your phone. Uh, I'm going to say the camera because I, 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 I got rid of a bunch of apps. Does that, oh, I'm, I'm going to ask the judge, does that, as a pl does that uh, qualify as an app? Is that an app? That's a, that is, is, that is a capability okay. of your phone, not an app. I'll, hey, I'll go to tune in radio because I can listen to any radio station in the world. Dig it. You get one song to listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? I'm going to say, uh, our lips are sealed by the go-go's. What did I do? You did what nothing. Did do? You did nothing, but I'm just imagining it forever. 
It's a fine. No one, I'm second to none in my love of Belinda Carlisle. Okay. Jane Wheedlin, but that's neither here nor there. Of course, sure. Can you hear them? Yes. Talk about us. Sure. Telling lies. That's no surprise. Can you look at them? Look like through them. They have a secret to them. Nothing to be revealed. Doesn't matter what they say in the jealous games people play. Our lips are sealed. That's right. Great, okay, great, I'll go for great, it. Great Eternity. Song. Eternity. Okay. What number am I thinking of? Six. No. Describe the rest of your life in five words. A. Magnificent cavalcade of color. Tom Hanks, everybody. Now you know him. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thanks again, Tom. When we come back, I'll ask what Meryl Streep asked a former president to autograph.